Namaste. How's it going? What constitutes a proper and holistic yoga asana practice, leading to more energetic and meditative benefits later on? Does practicing one or two asana, probably those are complex ones, fancy ones, and neglecting and taking the other ones aside could be considered an asana program? No. Asana is a way for us to break free from the tamas or the heaviness or the inertia of the physical body. Yes, by doing a few of them only would yeah, give you some physical benefit. But when it comes to that purpose, yeah, we need to develop the body and cultivate it in its entirety, from inside and outside, in all directions, in possible motions, yeah, actions, yeah, dimensions. And then this also prepares us for the rigors or the challenges of pranayama. Because the goal of asana is to open the energetic pathways within, to strengthen the cardiorespiratory system so we can absorb more energy out of the breath. Because we will be utilizing that in buffering our nadis and purifying them as well so we can awaken our subtle dimensions. When we talk about yoga asana, we pay attention to two important anatomical components. And it doesn't include the brain, actually. The spine and the hips. The brain is the most stubborn. It could even sabotage your practice. So controlling the brain without working on the lower body parts could be detrimental. It could create conflict or even pain and suffering. The spine, when it's open, paved way for the many energetic subtleness there. The nerves awaken, the circulatory system improve, and then the rest of us shall follow, even the brain. When the benefit of the practice happens to us, then we become more willing to sacrifice and a lot more time in the practice. Good. Now, Speaking of asana, there is an order, actually. When we talk about the spine, we have to move it in various directions. And even that is not enough, knowing that we need to move the spine. We need to tackle the order of its development. And the hips, of course. The first two years of the practice is crucial. It's important because it's when we gain the most out of the practice and also that's the time we could create many mistakes and then sometimes yeah mistakes could be more serious than just what yeah scratching the skin yeah it could even go as serious as breaking a bone or you know, sending you know, too much electrical current in your nervous system and then going back well, might be difficult to attain because the trauma will always be there lingering. And therefore, we need to follow the order. And this comes from personal experience. As human beings, we're more attuned yeah, to the action of forward bending, flexion. That's the first technique. That's the first action we need to develop, flexing elements. And in Hatha Yoga, there's one component of it, a recommended practice of the Pashimottanasana, or the sitting forward bend. And then there are many actually in the modern yoga, you know, standing ones, you know, those things. If you practice Surya Namaskar, for example, the Surya Namaskar, uh, the Sun Salutation, yeah, it's a complete one, yeah, except for the twist. Because the Surya Namaskar, there's always this uh, stepping forward and stepping backwards. And in the process, you're curling back, you're folding forward, yeah, and then you stretch the side body as well. But yeah, another component the Surya Namaskar lacks is the spinal twist. Now, flexing elements also develop the core of the body, aside from the physical benefit of releasing the back of the body and opening the back plane. 
yeah, forward bends likewise stimulate yeah, the nerve channels and the lower meridians of the energetic anatomy, particularly the Manipura chakra and then the lower ones of the Swadhisthana and the uh, Muladhara chakra. Yeah. And these are important because this is where the fire of the Agni comes from. Yeah, the Apana Vayu yeah, comes from the hips. And by cultivating the hips in the lower part of the spine, we pave way for the rising and the stimulation of these important channels, which in a normal situation, they are blocked or dormant for our safety, of course. Now, Side by side deflection, we also need to move the spine in its rotational axis, spiraling twist. And actually, forward bends and twisting could be alternate uh, elements, techniques you can practice. You may practice a forward bend, and then to break the cycle, you can do a twist. And in relation to that, another technique is side stretching. So those these three, flexion, Lateral extension, side bend, and twisting, they are clustered in one group. And then they all benefit the lower part of the energetic anatomy. All right. As an example, for example, if you are uh, having uh, a 30-minute practice of yoga asana, and in this modern time, 30 minutes is uh, quite challenging to sustain yeah, because you have to do it almost every day. So I recommend sitting in the Sukhasana. After sitting in the Sukhasana, circle around. Right. About a minute of this, moving side to side, just to loosen yeah, the stagnation. And then you're lifting the arms up. And then you place one hand to the side and stretch sideways. And after this, back to the center, and then twisting. So this is how I flow. It's like a compounded uh, technique. So like you're doing many techniques in one. I'm doing the Sukhasana, which is an essential. I'm doing a side stretch, and I'm doing a twist. Then I'll add on another side stretch, and I'll do a flexion over my hips. And as you hold that element, you can circle around like so. Or you can do Pashimottanasana, then flow a vinyasa, if you're doing a vinyasa, then sit, it's a Sukhasana, do side stretch and twist combination. And then do this uh, cycle for like two or three repetitions. Right? Because you're doing the side stretch, therefore you're doing you know, um, one per side, and that constitutes about, what, four repetitions already? Yeah, so level it, so to speak. About 15 minutes of your 30-minute uh, practice allotted to these three important elements. And in the long term, yeah, the bulk of your home practice should be allotted to developing the hips and the lower spine. Okay, now next, the, the, the fourth one, which is the most difficult, is extension. Back beans. As human beings, we're not given this ability to curl backwards. Yes, there are people who are gifted, but even then, if you're flexible to do the back bend without any strain, you're using the awareness you've developed in the previous observances in accessing the disc of your spine. Because in back bending, you just don't curl back. You need to lift the discs and then sending the breath through those discs to awaken the nerves and then you curl back to open the pathway. And then back bends opens the higher center, which is around the chest region, where yeah, our circulatory and uh, respiratory system are uh, located, the heart and the lungs. And back bending allows us to what? Yeah, draw more energy out of that gaseous breath, because that one, we're gonna be flowing down to our hips, where the apana is waiting, we've cultivated in the past lessons, and then together they blend around the Manipura chakra, and they will rise up to the brain. Good. And that leads me to the final culmination of your practice, which is a mudra. A mudra, in a technical sense, are practices we do to lift yeah, the unified force we cultivated from those lower observances to the brain. 
and there are various mudras. In Hatha Yoga, there's what we call the Viparita Karani Mudra, yeah, slash asana. Yeah, so where the hips are hanging up in the air, and then you're catching them with the hands, and you're holding it while performing other techniques involved in the practice. But that is an advanced one. For general practitioner, yeah, lying down is just a, in the Shavasana, yeah, lying down flat, is also a way for you to channelize the energy from the body to the brain. Sitting like this, is another one and then utilizing the power of the eyes and the power of the brain to lift the energy up mudras is where the spine is open yeah in the vertical position where it's stacked over itself so to speak and then the channels are freely open to receive the information yeah, to the brain okay so in a nutshell when you practice think about this Flexion, twisting, side stretching, open the spine, and you finish and culminate the practice with a mudra. And that constitutes a proper holistic yoga asana program. I'll see you in the next one. Namaste.